Render flux images in 8 seconds with full quality. Hello my friends and how are you doing? Today I want to show you the Flux Turbo LoRa which is really mind-blowing. I will show you in ForgeUI how to use it but also in ComfUI and of course my Patreon supporters get the workflow that I used as a test bench for creating my test images today. Let's get started. So first of all let's check out the Hugging Face page you have here a lot of interesting information and sample pictures to look at. You can see that this uses the full quality of your Lux model, including the text in there. So that's pretty cool. And when you go up here to files and versions, you can see that you have a model down here. This has to be saved into your LoRa folder inside of the models folder. This is called Diffusion PyTorch model dot save tensor. So you want to rename that to Flux 1 Turbo Alpha so that you know what kind of file that is. I also have prepared for you an extensive whiteboard where I show you the test images that I got with the LoRa but also without the LoRa and I also linked the models I've used for that. Now let's have a closer look at the results that we get in Forge UI. Of course on the left side we have it with the Turbo LoRa eight steps, very good details, very nice rendering. The composition is a little bit different. And I would say that in some regards, it introduces a little bit of problems. For example, if you look at the lip here, it has this kind of thicker rim, but that might be even out by getting a different seat. While on the right side with the 30 steps, we get a really good image, as you would expect from a full flux model with 30 steps of rendering. On the second image, you can see here we have this witch standing in the forest in both images. The details are beautiful. You can see in the staff there is like tiny errors on the LoRa model on the left. Uh, but on the other hand, it has some additional details that we don't have on the right side in the image. For example, with the LoRa image, the face is brighter and she has a belt, which is a nice additional detail. While on the 30 step model, you get a lot of very correct and beautiful, nice details. But in the character, it's a little bit less complexity because of it doesn't really have a belt here. Next for testing, I have here this luxury car in front of the villa through the sunset. Both of the images are really beautiful. I would even say that the LoRa image has a little bit more detail in here. Very similar composition overall. And by the way, I want to point out that below all of my testing images, you have the prompt that I'm using so you can check that out for yourself. And then here we have an image with even more complexity with the little girl holding a baby cat in her arms sitting in a cozy sofa chair. Now most of that actually worked out good but you can see here that the sofa chair has some strange details on the side while with the full 30 steps it has an actual nice sofa chair. Now I would say that that has to do with how Flux works because it changes the composition and the details over time with additional render steps. So the more steps you have in there, the finer details you get and the better it resolves what you have in your prompt. But as you've seen, most of the time it works really fine. Now let's look at some interesting details here. First of all, it's very important to point out that these links here don't work. When you click on them, you have to right click and then open link in new tab to get to this link here. This is the LoRa. You want to use that for any of these tests. And then on the right side here, we have the Flux Depth BNB NF4 model, which is smaller with only 11 gigabytes, but still gives you very good results inside of Forge UI. Now, when we zoom here a little bit closer, you can see inside of Forge UI, I'm using the LoRa and on average I'm getting here a render time of 10 seconds with the eight steps and with the 30 steps without the LoRa I'm getting a render time of 30 seconds with my RTX 4080 on a desktop computer. In this case for all of the images I'm using the Euler sampler with the simple scheduler because that gave me the best and most consistent results. Next we have here ComfUI with the Flux One Depth FP8 model. 
which also loaded nicely for me. In this case, I'm using the Euler plus beta sampler, which also works very nice. And you can see here for the turbo eight step LoRa, I got nine seconds for the render time for the 10 step normal render without the LoRa. This is in the advanced sampler, maximum steps, 10 steps, and then range zero to 10 steps. I get this result in the middle, which also looks very good after 11 seconds, but it doesn't have the full details. If you zoom in more, you will see that this is lacking a lot of the finer details. And then on the normal step without the LoRa, 30 steps, the render time is 35 seconds with of course, my 4080. And here's the most surprising part in ComfyUI when you use the GUF Q8 model, you get the slowest render time with the Turbo LoRa. It kind of doesn't really work at all. It does use eight steps, but it uses a 27 second render time. And that is basically on par with the 40 seconds for the 30 steps, as you can see on the right side here. And then for the 10 steps in the middle, we have 14 seconds. So actually the GUF Q8 model is the slowest inside of Conf UI. Now let's have a look on how this is set up inside of Forge UI. Like I said, the LoRa goes into the LoRa folder inside of the models folder. Up here, you load your checkpoint and if needed, also your clip vision model, the T5XXL model and the VAE model for your flux rendering, unless it is of course a compact model, which has all of these files rendered into it, but then you have a size of 22 gigabytes. And of course, in your prompt, you want to have here the LoRa at the end of the prompt. Now down here, you have a LoRa tab where you should be able to find the LoRa when you click on it. It is added up here with all of the text and the strength. You can leave the LoRa strength at one and then for the sampler and the scheduler. In my case, I use Euler Simple. It worked very consistently. Sampling steps eight, the distilled CFG scale 3.5 and the normal CFG scale at one. So basically what you would expect and then it should render flawlessly for you. I tried the full flux depth model, but for me that wouldn't render. It actually crashed my computer. So this model worked much more consistently for me. Now, let me also show you the workflow I built for you that you can get as a Patreon supporter. It's a very basic workflow, but I built up for you the different renderings here once with the Turbo LoRa, once with only the eight steps with the advanced K sampler, and then also the normal with the K sampler with 30 steps. So you can render all of that by pressing the Q button. First of all, up here, this is very important for the loaders. I have here the unit loader for the GUF model, and I have here the load diffusion model. In that case, when you want to switch them, you need to switch these two model inputs because of course the clip model is going to be the same. So you don't have to do anything about the clip model. So basically you go here, you switch that to bypass, you switch this to bypass, and then you simply reconnect that over. Although, like I said, the GUF model didn't really work so well for me. And in this case, it's important to know that the flux model goes into the diffusion model folder. Then of course we have here the normal inputs, your dual clip loader and your VAE loader with the flux VAE. This goes into the positive prompt, negative prompt, and of course the guidance. And again, down here, same thing, positive, negative, and guidance. Now you don't have a text input here because I put the text input over here to the right side. So you only have to enter the prompt once for both of these inputs. And of course we need both of these inputs because once we do it with the LoRa and once we do it without the LoRa, and that's basically it. That's all you have to do. Of course, up here you have your C generator, you have your latent image size. If you want to change any of those or set this here to a random to get different results over time. So the setup and use for this is super easy. I'm very surprised and amazed by the quick and very good results. Let me know what you think in the comments. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like that. Thanks for watching. Bye.